But um, let's go with uh, the question here. We always ask the same one since it's Friday. We ask what, what are the plans for the weekend? I'll go first. So it's going to be sunny, it looks like. At least the sun is going to shine for the weekend. And hopefully I'll have a nice Viking ride under the sun and get some sweat uh, for a while. That's, uh, that, those are the plans it's on top of working on this new NFT project that I'm working with an artist, a comic artist in Barcelona that I hopefully will be able to show you uh, in a few days uh, when we just start getting, putting everything together. Uh, we're going to try it on the Wax blockchain to see how it goes. Most, it's basically a card collectible. It's a card collectible uh, NFT project. So we, it's, that's where all the collectible card uh, is taking place over there. So that's, uh, we're going we're gonna to test it over there. All right, so that's our, those are the plans. What about you, IV? Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I'm planning to uh, go diving again, to dive on Sunday. So it's only a one day uh, trip because it's not so far away from our house. So I, I will go there early in the morning, then come back in the afternoon. The, those pictures were amazing, especially the one of the two turtles. <laughs> were, it was incredible. It was. That was. I'm I'm going to this, this to the same dive spot <laughs> where uh -huh. I was. Before. Great, great. All right. And I Good. pass. Yeah. Okay. Should I pass it to um one? Thanks, Ivy. Um. My plans for the weekend today, my parents are going to visit me in my new apartment and I'm going to cook for them. And um, tomorrow morning I will uh, join Praise Quant and I don't know what I am going to do in the night, but um, I would like to go out and maybe take a beer or something. And Sunday just uh, rest. Um, uh, what about you, Sean? Morning, everyone. Um nothing too special uh probably work in the garden uh over the weekend and uh hopefully we'll have some tomatoes that start turning red here soon all right uh, pass it back to you griff yeah uh well so before i say weekend plans i do have a hard stop at 10 30 for myself so if there's anything that okay. you guys want to especially like bring up for me i'm really sorry um but uh, on the other side, um, weekend plans, I am going to skip my bike ride, unfortunately. Uh, I'm really sad about that. But it's in favor of hiking, in favor of hiking. So <laughs> we scheduled the praise quant in a way where I can't make the bike trip with the kids that I do every Saturday. So we'll just, uh, but that's okay. I'm doing praise quant because that's really fun anyway. And then uh, we'll do... Uh, uh, go on a big hike. You know, I have all these beautiful mountains around me. I don't know. I always like to brag. You know, well, since... Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful spot, man. I'm going to have to come visit you sometime over there. Yeah. I mean, I got to hike some of them. I don't know which one, but I'm going to try to get to the top of one of these. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, since Juan Carlos is going to go out tonight and have a few beers, you're going to have a nice praise quantification session tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and I'll, I'll pass it to uh, Olivia. Yeah, I'm excited for the weekend because it's mostly the time I can work on the house and we moved recently and it's finally getting to this place that is like ah, getting nice and comfy. And I think we'll invite some friends to come over tomorrow, maybe have a little, little something. And... All right. Yeah, and I pass to Zach Timus. Thank you, Olivia. Uh, well, my plan for the weekend, first of all, is fix the internet. It's, going, it's working very bad lately. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what I have to do, but uh, I'll try to fix it. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah, rest a bit, and maybe, maybe I go to the shop and, yeah, buy some food. Nothing else. I'll pass it to Dr. Lau. Um, got nothing on except catching up on a lot of backlog of work. So it passes on to 
Um, who, who I think the only one Caesar? missing is Adrian. Is Adrian, but I don't know if he's in the shower or if he's there. Yeah, are you there, Adrian? No. So we'll just uh, we'll just start start moving. Okay. So uh, um, the focus of today of today is to hack on the um, keep uh, continue on this discussion we had last last week on the terms to uh, for the Hatch DAO. Okay, for the proposals of the Hatch DAO, and uh, I'd love if Sean, do you uh, if I I can share my window. We can start with that uh, with that email that you sent me last night, and that Sean created a great um, um, how we how do you call it that uh, structure of uh, of the things that he thought we should be discussing. So let me see if I can find the document here. There we go, and I can share it with you. Please. Let me know if you if you see it. And if you want, Sean, can you share with us uh, the idea that you had uh, when you were creating this uh, this document structure? Yeah. So we so, uh, we can go over those. Yeah. So nothing too complicated, at least based on the discussion last week. I thought the other document we're talking about, which is going to be for the people who want to make proposals is going to be a much more thorough document than this. This is, I think, probably going to only be a couple pages, two, three pages. And the idea was kind of, A, to start with, how did we get here? Like, why, why are we even at a point where we're discussing what these terms are? And I think that'll be real quick. I mean, we're talking a lot of this stuff is like one paragraph stuff. You know, we're here because, you know, the the... Hatch was able to to secure enough money to to hit that point where we said okay it's gonna it's gonna work. Um, that second point, a small word about DAOs. Uh, Santi and I have already kind of talked about. Um, probably no need to explain it because everyone that's going to be involved uh, with the hatching is going to probably understand it pretty well. That that may make more sense in the proposal terms than in the hatching terms. Um, then I wanted to kind of describe how the voting to hatch the DAO was going to work. Um, and Santi very nicely is going to help walk me through some of the, because I think this is the one that's dandelion voting. Um, he's going to walk me through that um, uh, either later today or over the weekend or whenever we get a chance to, to do it. Then I think the, the, what I thought were the more important parts or the most important parts uh, is those next couple of sections kind of what does the community kind of want to happen and that's the proposals that we're we're anticipating that are going to occur for the hatching um and there i think you know santi and i and and to the extent we need to hook up with anyone else will kind of provide a little guidance there on on some of those proposals that we're expecting to happen um then I thought we'd go into a little bit about okay, here's how anyone else that's that's basically holding the governance tokens will be able to make proposals as well. And then, kind of lastly, uh, uh, what are the potential risks here? Um, now, obviously, you know the potential smart contract risk is kind of probably evident in everything that happens. But I, I was kind of curious what other risks we think that might be happening, at least at, at this particular point. So none of this is too long. This is two, three pages, and it's probably big font to even make it two, three pages. But I, I at least at this point, still think it's worthwhile to kind of have out there for people. OK, should we just go one by one, and, and maybe uh, anyone can share uh, the thoughts? Brief, since you're leaving earlier, do you wanna do you want to go sure. first? Yeah, I, this this sounds great. This sounds like a blog post um, that that can go along with the terms. You know, it's like, uh, hey, let's make the terms comprehensible, <laughs> novel concept. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think this is this looks like a great format. Um, 
the big risks are that hey you might like join and you might leave and lose money like um you know because you don't like the con what the dow decides to do when you rage quit that's that's the big risk i think um that just needs to be called out the rest is uh the rest is pretty simple you know and and it it, it looks simple because of the structure that you put in place you know i, I don't think it I, I really appreciate that so um, as for specific questions, where will voting take place to hatch? Um, so this is that token log thing that also might like the thing that we might need to include that is a little different than most DAOs is that there's also a lot of off-chain conversation um, and structured off-chain conversation with other voting tools, specifically token log and forums and GitHub and all of that. So that I don't know if that's, I think that we need to disclose that. I don't know if that needs to, I hope that that's something that you guys can just link to instead of feeling that you have to take it on to, to describe. So, um, yeah, that's, I think that's about it. And yeah, so I'll, I'll pass it to Olivia. Yeah, those are great questions. I'm wondering if they could leave in the get book like we can complement with what we already have there. That is a, a little bit of a, a how to hatch a guide, including like all of the actions you can take. So we could put it there. And wasn't there an onboarding um, group? And if so, um, if I've already got some material, what can we um, avoid duplicating? Yeah, yeah I, I think the closest wanna... of yeah. Go ahead, Olivia. No, I think the closest of of this is the is the git book. So if we put together there, we wouldn't be duplicating anything. I think. And I passed to Juan. I think that the idea of making a, a medium post is really good because um we need to communicate this to the outside and we're focusing really good on communicating this to the inside to the people that is in the in the organization and i think that more or less people is in the same track like more than less people is in the same track and is and is aware of what's what's happening but it's good um if we could reach to the outside and in a really simple way to like um um relate to the deeper work that has been done in in other documents but like present this and this goes along um with the idea of of having like blog posts around uh, the different working groups and we are writing one for transparency and it's good also that we can write one for legal so that, that is just like um making the, the, the document and then um, we can write to, to Jess and he help, she helps us with that. No, I think, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. I think that, uh, that idea of keeping it in the format or lengthwise where it, it is easily readable as, as a blog post or something put in Discord or, or something is, is a really good idea. And I think that that I'll definitely think about that as I'm writing. Okay, I think to me, the most important section is the last one, uh, you know, warning about the potential risks of participating. If you, if you put a proposal, if you, uh, if you decide to leave uh, <clears throat> uh, before, before we move to the, um, to the, uh, if the, if the proposal passes and you don't, agree with it and you decide to leave before you know while you have time because there's going to be a, some time to uh to allow anyone who wants to leave to do so and uh, those are basically the risks that uh, or the the area that i think we have to focus a little bit more the rest is more information than anything else which is great especially for those that are not involved in the organization daily because uh they they of, i tend to think that if anyone is a hatcher, he and if he's not in the organization directly involved in the organization, he's gonna 
he's going to be putting money. And if he puts money, he's probably going to, you know, try to understand what's going on here more than just throwing his money and knowing nothing about it. But still having some description of, of uh, how that works and, and, and how we got here and so on, it's, it's good. But uh, the risks are what I, I wouldn't say concern, concerns me more, but the, I think they are the most important part of, of, of this uh, document or, or blog post or whatever way we decide to uh, communicate it. And, uh, and that's what I, would, I really would focus on. Um, one of the questions I had, and, and this may be more esoteric than, than concrete examples, but Griff, are there any proposals that you you worry about someone proposing or you worry about a direction the community considers going in that we need to call out now? Or is it more just, you know, don't be a jerk kind of proposals? You know, these fears, it's hard to know until we have this parameters. Like if we have a 10% quorum, I just can't imagine anybody, it would be really difficult for anyone to pass something that didn't have a lot of, lot of consensus. <clears throat> and if we have like a thousand dollar fee to create the proposal, then same again, like you, you have to have a, you ha kind of have to have fuck you money to even propose something. Right. So like, uh, as a jerk. So I, I don't think, um, it's hard to say the, the likelihood of, or like the fears until those parameters are set, but, in general, I think I guess like saying all things go well. I guess the the challenge will be if there's like two uh, if if people don't respect the shelling point around token log because uh, we have this like on chain but off chain voting uh, scenario that needs to be ratified by the DAO, and um, this is where Livia's work comes in so well. But I think it's also the legal stuff. Just saying like you know calling out that there's this token log thing and that the DAO will need to ratify the decision that is made of the parameters for launching the commons upgrade because the, the design and the expectation is that's the only vote that really matters if that fails then like maybe the DAO just becomes a mullet DAO and it just starts funding other projects or something but <laughs> there's really only expectations of one vote and hopefully that vote will just be a ratification of the token log, um, you know, vote. So, yeah, I, I I think you're right, but there is another type of risk that I see here, which are the risk of uh, you know of something that we are that's unexpected, you know, malfunction, some hacking while we transfer the funds, things like that. And I think we should warn people. I think that's a good that. idea. If there's a bug found in the smart contracts, or there's like a some weird like unexpected glitch um i mean we're trying to test and we're getting audits and stuff but these things still happen with audits um if there's some sort of weird bug uh yeah that would be the other vote it's like a technical upgrade mm -hmm. no but i'm not mentioning i'm not even mentioning a technical upgrade that goes through a proposal because we figured out there's a bug i i mean of the risks of of losing your because a hacker just jumps in and finds a glitch and steal it. You know, it's, it's, to me, there's two types of risks. There's the risks because someone proposes something that we probably, that probably is not going to happen. Then the, the, someone proposes something and, and passes and it's not expected. Second, there's the risk of those who put the proposal and, and passes, you know, just because that's what we are working for and everything goes correctly in terms of proposing and passing, but there's those that propose it, that, you know, that are different than those that don't propose it just because they did, you know, launch the proposal. And then there's the risks of malfunction, of hatch, of, of, a, of, a, of a hacker or, or, you know, something like that where everyone loses here, okay? So to me, those are the three risks that we have to at least decide how to communicate because everyone should be aware of. Yeah, I mean, definitely on the risks section in terms of like what are the potential risks. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty to add there. Smart contract hacking, you know, unhappy with community decisions, rage quitting. I, I think I can fill that out. I mean, I hit everything, Santi, we'll have to add some stuff. 
but I think I can get that. Um, and and in it's, in, of, it's in the hatch terms pretty well already, too. Yeah. Yeah, we can even make reference yeah. to it and, and feed back into it. Um, uh, because, again, I think that this is a good example of a, of a time where, to the extent that we need to redirect people to other places to, you know, study up on something, that's perfectly fine. Okay, that's that's really, really helpful, guys. Okay. So, uh, any, do we want, go ahead, go ahead, Libby. I think one part that we might need to explain a little bit better is why we are doing the hatch in two phases. Because I feel like that it, that can sound a little bit sketchy if people don't understand like the whole reason behind it. So, yeah, just communicating well that transition phase. How is it going to work? What is each token? Uh, how do you get each one of the tokens that will be used? What is their functionality? How does the distribution work? We have most of it already, but just a, a better transition explanation, I think. Uh, Livy, I think that's that's. Do you think that should be on the on the on, on the how did we get here yep. in the first point, Livy? Yep. Mm -hmm. And Libby, I reached yeah, out that to you sounds good. That's a good because I thought, I thought you yesterday in the sync meeting, in, in whatever document it was you were sharing with us, I thought the, the first paragraph I saw was just such a great explanation of the two phases and why is it going like this that, that I immediately thought, oh, that's, that's the kind of description I think is necessary here even though I think everyone's really familiar with it, uh, because obviously the, the people that are going to be involved in this particular phase clearly understand things in a different way than, than people who may come to the community later to make individual proposals. Um, but I, I really liked that document you shared because I, I thought it, it had some really good language in there. Um, so yeah, I'll de I think that's definitely a great thing to add to that first section. As long as we make sure that, you know, part of the legal strategy is that it is optional to upgrade to, to do the comments upgrade. You know, our intention was to start it at the beginning and do the whole thing, but the whole legal strategy is this is an option and we really are just launching the TEC hatch now with, and there is an intention by some people to want to upgrade it to this other DAO, but it's up to the DAO to decide and the DAO is sufficiently decentralized. So like, there's like, you know, there is this intention, but in the end, the DAO is the DAO, and they get to, they get to choose their way. Yeah, in fact, even that's that's why in the outline grip, I, I to just to remind myself primarily, that's why I'm always referring to the community. The community, this what does the community expect? Um, because even in the outline form, I wanted to maintain that idea that that's the driving yeah. force here is this decentralized group of people. Um, that are sending it in a certain direction or sending this this patching down a certain direction. If I if I try to think on your words, Griff, and I look at point number three, which says voting to hatch the DAO, somehow it seems like the only purpose of this DAO is to is to vote to hatch the DAO. And if we wanna if we wanna if we wanna leave that door open that the DAO can vote on anything, maybe we should uh, change the you know the, the words on that on that point and and make it a little bit more open although of course the purpose is to hide it out so in the end there is an intention by some group to propose this to this DAO, uh but it's up to the DAO to agree to it right and the DAO mm -hmm. gets to decide if they want to agree to it and they they can and they should know that they have the option to not it's a not upgrade mm -hmm. and it, uh, it would be incongruent to choose that legal strategy and then not like um, make that very clear, I would say. Yeah, that's what I meant. If we, if we, although it's clear that the DAO can vote on anything and anything can happen, uh, we, from just reading at the, at the titles, at the headlines, it's like, okay, voting to hide the doubt. This is what we are going to be doing. No, no, no. This is 
the one of the options that's going to be appearing. But I would somehow I don't know maybe myself, but uh, the interpretation I get from that sentence is when, that that's read, what we are doing. When I read that sentence, I thought it was about the choosing the parameters for the hatch, not the parameters for the commons upgrade. Okay. So that, that's what I read when I saw it, because there is this like, hey, how does the DAO even like? Because there's the DAO and the commons. I see these as two different entities, you know. And mm -hmm. and actually, mm -hmm. on the smart contract side, they are completely different entities. We will have the DAO, and then the DAO will decide if they want to move all of their money to a commons. And so when I see the word DAO, I think of the hatch DAO, and why? In the next one will be the commons. Mm -hmm. So, what would be the motivation for? What was that, Libby? What 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 would be the motivation for someone to not vote for the upgrade? Do we have that clear? Well, if someone proposed the upgrade and it wasn't what the was voted on on token log. It was like the third favorite choice or something. You might vote no on it. Uh, or maybe like, you know, people who weren't paying attention during the, like, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's kind of a challenge, you know? You could, uh, people can technically, and, and oh, this is important. Um, the way the DAO is set up now, the TEC hatch DAO, anyone can propose it. Anyone can propose. You don't have to be a TECH token holder to propose. Okay. So, uh, and we could change that, but we're trying to freeze the audits, and I think it's okay. Uh, unless you guys have a huge, uh, no, we need it to be TECH token holders. It's also kind of nice because then um, we can do Dao Toshi Nakamoto doing the right, commons up right yeah someone someone away from the community yeah someone not even in the community right yeah that that no one knows who's uh who this is which protects their liability a lot more than giving them some words on a piece of on, on some terms i think um mm -hmm. okay so that's that's one thing uh that was important but the other thing was just that um i don't yeah never mind i forget what i was gonna say pass it No, oh, yeah, you were mentioning that if someone doesn't pay attention, they see the proposal there, they think they have to vote it, and boom, they vote it, and and two or three more people vote it without even going over it, <laughs> and it passes, and it's not the proposal that was supposed to pass just because someone was, uh, you know, cheating or using the the ability yeah. to post a proposal, and and it, it's not it's not if moving we have forward the parameters that we decided on talking about. If we have a low quorum. You know that could vary, or in a short voting period, that could definitely happen. Uh, a low quorum, low support required. These things, um, depending on what those choices are from the the hatch, the parameters choices around the hatch down. These things could really happen. So, uh, I I do think that we have this added bonus of the uh, of the you know rage quit. So like if there's a if the vote. <laughs> is passes there's a time delay where the vote can't be executed during this period and anyone can exit so that's a nice parachute and is the toll gate fee decided yet nothing's decided that's part of uh we're, we're gonna start hopefully this week we'll have we'll actually i'm, I'm pretty sure on the 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 uh, TEC HatchDAO parameters dashboard is going to be finished on Sunday, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's pretty much there. Um, we just have to convert it from the test hatch params to the, to the real params. And we can actually hopefully start proposing parameters this week for the hatch. So that, things are going to start to feel real, really real when that happens. So that's kind of that's pretty cool. But no, there's nothing decided. The only thing that's that's kind of been uh, decided is that the TEC hatch token will be non-transferable. That's basically the only parameter that I feel like 
has like an obligation to be decided for legal reasons. Um, but on that note, I have to run, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, do we want to focus on the uh, on the potential risks here, which seems to be the most uh, important part of the document, and then and then we can we can start work discuss them next week. And are, are we taking notes somewhere? So maybe no, we can we hack be and notes that. Maybe let me copy. Yeah, let me copy paste this in our new document and. And then I'll share it with you guys. Uh, I have letter in the end. Computer is slow. Have too many things open here. Griff and I are having a session on Monday to wrap up the HatchDAO uh, session on Gitbook. Maybe if you guys want to join us, we could include all of this stuff in there too. I don't know if it's going to be ready though by Monday. Maybe. What title do you guys want to put it here? Um, Okay, I'm sharing the link here on on legal uh, tech channel. Let me know if you can <clears throat> if you can edit it. Yes, Andy, it works fine. All right, perfect.
So do we leave uh, five more minutes and then we go over all these suggestions that everyone was sharing here? Five more minutes. Okay, should we just start going over the document, see all the addings that everyone did here? So if we start from the top, <clears throat> how did we get here? And that's where we were mentioning, the, mentioning that we should explain <clears throat> the reason we, we are at this point that uh, mentioned that we reached the minimum cap required to, to, uh, <clears throat> to reach this point. And, uh, 
and and yeah maybe it's it's a good point it's a good space to describe the difference between the two DAOs the one that we call the Hatching DAO which is this one that we will be at this at the present time and the Commons DAO which is the conviction body one that's where we will migrate if uh, there's a proposal that suggests to migrate over there with the parameters that we would have that would have been voted on token lock so basically explain the two the two uh, DAOs and and make sure everyone understands that process and uh, and also explain the different directions that uh, that anyone as a member and and that the DAO could take you know we could uh, you can you can still leave even if the proposal passes and, uh, and or you can just uh, remain in the DAO and if the proposal to migrate to the Commons DAO uh, succeeds your funds will be transferred as, as the rest of the funds over there and 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 you won't be able to take them back with you you will have the token but until the uh, the bonding curve is up and running and uh, the vesting period for the hatchers has passed uh, they won't be able to to just uh, un uninvest if they want to okay so yeah probably that's uh that's those are the th things that i had in mind when writing those notes here is anyone else wanna wanna add something more any anything else here i don't know if you guys hear me yeah Hey, Santi. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry yeah. to interrupt. I, I have one question for you in terms of uh, the, the hatched out and launching the hatched out. Is the, is the daily line voting going to be used in order to initiate those parameters? And is the token log just to use for signaling? We're going to be using the token log as a community to decide those parameters that we choose to, uh, <clears throat> to deal with the commons now, the final now. Okay, and and once we choose that through token lock, and there will be sets of parameters that we will be discussing, you know, just before even the hatching DAO launches. Once we we all agree, and you know, the one the one set of parameters that gets the most the most votes will be the one that we will decide we'll use to implement the commons DAO. So the process is we propose the parameters through token lock and we choose a set of parameters through token lock. Now that we already have decided which set of parameters we will we want in the final DAO, the commons DAO, um, we launch the hatching DAO, we, uh, we, fund, we fund the DAO and we set up a proposal to migrate everything to the final commons DAO with those parameters that we decided through token lock. Is that clear, Nate? Don't, uh, yeah, so we don't use uh, dandelion voting at all during the pre-hatch phase. I, I, I feel like there's a uh, difficult way to distinguish where the pre-hatch phase uh, ends and the, the post-hatch DAO begins. So as soon as, clarify. okay, the, the, the ideal process, and if everything goes correctly, this is what's gonna happen, okay? We discuss parameters before even you know, starting the, the hatch DAO process. We reach an agreement uh, on what set of parameters we want for the final DAO. Once we have that, we ha we, the, the hatching process starts, we get funded, we reach minim minimum cap, and then we are on pre-hatch, okay? Because that DAO is the hatch DAO. And then that DAO launches just one proposal, defining the terms, that the final DAO, which is going to be a conviction voting plus a B, uh, plus aumented funding curve DAO, going to have, okay? And that that is, that uh, proposal passes. Then all the funds are transferred to the new DAO, and the initial DAO, the hatching DAO, remains just in case any time we want those parameters to be changed. But initially, there's not going to be many many more proposals on that DAO. Every once in a while, we may want to 
change a param one, para one of the parameters or, 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 or whatever. But initially, there's just going to be one proposal. That's the migration to the, to the commons app. Does the hatch DAO continues? I understood that it would be fully migrated once the full commons is launched. Well, all the funds are going to be migrated, but we will still have the tokens and it will be there. And I think, I think, and I may be wrong, and, and, and we we've, we've can clarify that next week, but I think that that DAO remains, it's a Dandelion DAO, that we will use if we ever want to change the parameters of the of the of the commons law, of the final one, because th there's got to be a way where we can vote to change the parameters of the commons law. Okay, I understood. I understood that the dandelion uh, instance it would just be one part of the full commons, but that the hatched out tokens would be burned so it wouldn't be like a a hatch it wouldn't be separated from the full commons but maybe we just need to clarify that yeah yeah we may need to clarify that yeah we, maybe we can go over with that with grief but my idea is that the 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 hatched out which is the Andelian one will remain for any parameter change that we may need in the future. But it will have no funds, okay? It will be just uh, to, to launch proposals to change parameters because all the funds will, will be gone to the Commons DAO. Unless we fund it because we launched some proposal on the Commons DAO that we request to get some funds on the, on the HUD DAO for whatever reason, you know? But initially there won't be any funds. So any uh, comment on, on one and two? And again, I, I think uh, I will share that with Griff and I'll, I'll ask him to give it a, a read and, and, and add his comments there. So for the third part or the third paragraph, uh, the voting, I think it's very important to understand all the parameters just because especially those that are not in the organization or you know on a daily uh you know involvement uh, are gonna are, are gonna need some explanation here and it's important to know what toll gate is what's the quorum that we've decided on those basically they will be giving an explanation of the parameters that will be chosen on token law okay what well, and explaining it again and again we can refer to the explanation that's on I, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's some document where we have uh, all the description of those parameters that the params group is working on and, and just make reference to that. So anyone can go and check exactly what Tollgate was, what, 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 what the quorum, the minimum quorum that we decided to have and, and all that. So they get, everyone gets a clear understanding of how the proposal, the voting of a proposal runs on the HADSA. And here on what we would like to happen is what I would describe that we are migrating to the Commons DAO. And that's what we that's what we all want to happen and maybe give a little explanation of what is that proposal proposing, which will be, you know, transferring all the funds to the uh, Commons DAO and and start start running. Maybe, maybe uh, I don't know the third should be mentioned here somehow. I have the feeling that we should mention the vesting period somehow in this document. We will have to check where is that mentioned in 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 the other documents that we are creating, and uh, and maybe put a link there. But maybe, maybe because this is not part of the voting; it's part of the of the rules, if you want to call them, that uh, everyone will have, everyone that has participated on the on the on the hatch, on the funding period will have. So yeah, we should add that 
somewhere in, in because everyone's got to be able to understand that if the if the proposal passes you're going to have some period of time where you won't be able to get your funds at all no matter if those are you know higher or lower or whatever so you got to have that clear because if you don't want to then you can just uh get out paying the fee and and so yeah here i would say pension period uh yeah and 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 on the voting because those are voting parameters but right here on the um maybe on how did we get here there is the fee the exit fee that we should mention i don't know where maybe here with the vesting yeah there's a vesting period if the proposal passes but and if you leave you will have this uh I think they they call it the tax or the uh, I I forgot the name. We have to check on the name of that parameter. But yeah, the the tax that you leave uh, always, no matter if 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 when, whenever you leave, there's yeah the tax fee that you gotta the know. exit tribute. Yeah, the exit tribute. Yeah, we I, I I I always remember that we don't like using tax, but I don't remember the other word. So yeah, the exit tribute. Right. Thank you, Libby. So we gotta mention those there. So if the if the proposal passes, there's gonna be the vesting period, and if and if you decide to to exit, you're gonna go through the exit tribute. So you absolutely know what you can do, and 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 then you have to do that during the time that uh, you have after the proposal is passed in the event you wanna leave. Right. And how to make the proposal? I think it's, it was you, Juan Carlos, that was uh, that was describing this here. How to make the proposal? Do you want to share it? Yes. Um, um, that um, we highly encourage engaging in an advice process with the community before submitting proposals. The DAO has autonomy to remove proposals proposals that are contrary to our mission, vision, values, and terms and conditions and of chain communication with within the tc forums github and servers it's really important to support proposal Propo posting a proposal is the tip of the iceberg of a work that is backed up uh, by the work of the community or by the community mm -hmm. good and finally the risk who was who was writing that there was that you sean uh oh no no Can anyone that shared those um, those sentences on the risk paragraph share share them? It was me, but I don't know if the connection is good. Do you hear me, guys? Yes. The, mostly, this we have is like a book in the smart contract, so we lose the money. Or even if you think like the community is aligned with something, and then you see like the community is voting for something else, then you would not uh, have the DAO you expected. That's something we should mention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, right. And and how to exit in the event that some proposal that was not expected finally passes for whatever reason. There's always a, a way you can exit. And uh, yeah, that should be that should be stated there so everyone knows what to do in case of, of emergency. All right, great. That was a, a great hacking session. Uh, Sean, do you think you can start working on that with, uh, with the document as it is now? And maybe we can share it sometime during next week before next uh, Friday meeting? Absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Great. Uh, I think we can call it for now. It's almost the hour. Mm, so thank you everyone for sharing uh, today, for, for attending that today's meeting. And uh, just before we go, Sean, if you want, I, ha I have a few minutes now that I can I can help you with. Or okay. if not, just let me know what works for you, and we can try to to meet sometime either during the weekend or next week. Let's try right now. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you everyone for sure for for joining, and I'll see you next next Friday. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Santi.